Um, I see a lot of you filing in, wanted to give people time to get, get logged in before we kick things off, but we have a really full program for you today, so I don't want to delay too much longer. Um, but hello, for those of you for whom this is your very first Minnesota Cup event, I am Jessica Berg. I'm the director of Minnesota Cup. We are a program of the Home Center for Entrepreneurship at the Carlson School of Management, but we are run um, like a not-for-profit ecosystem organization who serves the entire Minis state of Minnesota. Entrepreneurs across the state apply and participate in our free process every year, and we are only able to do the work that we're able to do for um, so many companies every season because of the generous financial and volunteer support of a ton of different organizations. Um, um, for particularly for this division, um, we're super grateful to General Mills and 301 Inc. for being the lead sponsor of our food egg bed division. And I am going to turn it over to Johnny Tran from 301 Inc. to say a few words. Hi, everyone. Uh, uh, like Jessica said, I'm Johnny Tran from 301 Inc. We are the, the venture arm uh, for General Mills. Uh, I just have a couple of quick remarks and then uh, I'll pass it right back. Um, but first of all, thank you so much for having us here. Thank you so much for the Minnesota Cup team for, uh, for being an amazing partner. Um, and I just wanted to share three quick insights uh, that we've found over the course of this past year, uh, which highlights why this is so important to us. So first of all, I think what we learned was food, food is essential. You know, while many other industries shut down, food was a mainstay, grocery stores staying open, restaurants uh, doing takeout. So food is an essential part of all of society. And we're, uh, we're grateful to be a part of it. Second thing we learned was that innovation is happening at all parts of the value chain. As restaurants switched to takeout only, um, grocery delivery uh, went through the roof. Supply chains were disrupted and had to be adjusted all across the value chain. So innovation is happening at all parts of food. And third, and finally, I think what we found as we're doing this thing virtually, right, that ideas have been decentralized. It's not really about where you're working, where you're sitting, but great ideas can come from anywhere. And structurally, as you think of startups, the advantage is typically uh, enjoyed by the coasts with a lot of clustering, maybe are a little bit relevant, uh, less relevant today than they were previously. And so when you take these three insights around food being essential, innovation across the entire value chain and the decentralization of ideas. You can see why we believe this partnership with the Minnesota Cup is so important. Because, you know, chances are the future of food isn't within our company. There's a good chance that it's somewhere out there, maybe within some of you. And we, we love our partnership with the Minnesota Cup because we can do things to help make that future a reality. So uh, again, thank you so much for having us. Uh, thank you, Minnesota Cup team, for, uh, for being great partners. And I'll pass it back to you. Thank you so much, Johnny. That's awesome. So I want to say um, another quick thank you. Um, just in addition to General Mills and 301 Inc., we have incredible support and partnership from across the state of Minnesota, across different sizes and types of organizations that are part of the food value chain. And it's truly through all of these uh, organizations' commitment to and support of this division that make all the services and support that we provide possible. Um, we are also able to give away a $25,000 prize to the winner of this division and all of our other eight divisions. Um, and we take no equity in exchange for that seed capital. Um, and we, yeah, we are able to do it because of everyone's generosity and um, definitely because of the tremendous volunteer support and expertise from our judges and mentors that have been giving of their time and thoughtfulness in opening their networks to these uh, competitors all summer and um, without which we could never do what we do at the scale that we do. So thank you all for your commitment to Minnesota founders and particularly to the food, egg and beverage space. So uh, without further ado, I'm gonna kick it over to Jamie Bartlett, who is our program coordinator, and she is going to actually um, queue up and be the MC for the pitches themselves. So um, let's get going and, and Jamie, I'll hand it over to you. Great, thank you. Okay, here's our agenda for today. We have nine of our 10 semifinalists are able to come. Um, each will be presenting for three minutes and three slides. Uh, and then we will uh, ask one of the questions from our judges. 
And then stick around at the end because uh, you as the audience will be able to vote on the best pitch of the day. Um, and then we have a few more awards happening at the end. So a uh, pretty exciting one. Uh, so let's just get rolling because we have a lot to cover today. Okay, so first up, we have all clean food. And up oh, there you go, I see you. And you, Jamie. I will let you take over. You can see me? Okay, as Jamie said, hi everybody, I'm Laura and I am the CEO and co-founder at All Clean Food. We launched All Clean Food in February of 2020 because we were struggling really hard to find easy meal solutions for our kids with allergies. My husband, Michael, and I would often find ourselves cooking into the wee hours of the night and asking ourselves, why is this so hard feeding our family and why is there nothing out there for us? And there's got to be a better way, doesn't there? I know that anybody who can relate to this issue knows the struggle I mean. So we realized that we're not alone in this struggle. At least 32 million Americans struggle with food allergies. And that's just the people who have diagnosed food allergies. There's this whole other group of people who are trying to figure out, do I have food allergies? Maybe I have food sensitivities or perhaps removing an item from their diet for a health related issue um, such as celiac or another autoimmune disorder. So we decided to create something not only for our family, but all of these families, something for all around the table, something organic, quick and easy, and of course, free from the top 14 allergens. And you can go to the next slide. Here are our organic, allergy-friendly pasta meals. They're shelf-stable, super easy to make, grab from the pantry on a busy night, and we're proud to say we're the only meal of its type that's allergy-friendly and organic in the U.S. We're super proud to say that we check all these health-related boxes, ma making us the best option in this category. Organic, allergy-friendly, vegan-friendly, non-GMO, certified organic, or excuse me, certified gluten-free and made from real ingredients only. So there's no hidden ingredients, no questions about what's in our food. We are super excited to be launching two vegan Macs this fall. They're kid-friendly, interactive, and adorable. And then some poppable, high-protein plant-based snacks in early 2022. Right now, you can find our meals in most of the local co-ops and health food stores. And come this fall, we'll be in over 600 locations, including Hy-Vee, Meyer grocery stores, and Lunds and Byerly's. You can go to the next slide. Our mission at All Clean Food is to make healthy eating easier for all, because we know that you have to eat well to feel well. Thank you. Great job. All right. Quick question here. Uh, what can you share regarding your marketing efforts to expand your reach? Our marketing efforts right now include uh, mainly social media, and then we're doing everything we can this summer to get out into the public. You know, events are finally starting to happen again. We just got to um, demo at Seward Co-op last weekend, and we're doing all the local events that we can so we can actually meet and interact with people and hear their stories and get their feedback, which I'm really thankful has been really positive. Um, so we're just honestly, we're getting out there and we're hustling as much as we possibly can locally and then getting out there as much as we can over social media. Awesome. Good job. Thank all you, right. Jamie. Next up, Khalid from Babas. All right, can you see me? I can and I can hear you, take it away. Awesome. All right, so my name is Khalid Ansari and I am uh, one of the co-founders and CEOs of Babas. Um, so Babas is a modern Middle Eastern food brand um, and we specialize in dips, spreads, pita bread and falafel. Um, so Baba started, um, Baba's means father. And um, my father came to the United States in 1976 uh, as a 17-year-old immigrant from uh, Palestine, specifically Jerusalem. Um, and he was a very ambitious uh, young kid and decided to start a restaurant in the Twin Cities. And he started one of the first uh, Middle Eastern restaurants um, in all of the Twin Cities. So he was um, really evolutionary and, and, you know, showing people new products that they've never had before. And as me and my sister, Rena, who's the other co-founder, um, grew up, we were eating, you know, 
super good Middle Eastern food. And um, we knew we had something special, especially in our hummus. Um, our hummus is really what took um, us to the market. Um, as you can see, uh, we have seven different flavors, all of which are um, American, Palestinian inspired. Um, we also have some other dips, baba ganoush, tzatziki, um, pita bread, falafel, and we have some other um, products that are in the pipeline. Now you can go to the next slide. So that comes to why babas. There is so many different products in the market, especially with hummus. Um, you go to the grocery aisle and you see tons of different kinds. Um, what makes us different is we have an authentic creamy hummus that is authentic to the Middle East. Um, and we want to showcase that because there's nothing in the market that's like it. Um, once people try this hummus, they're um, addicted to it. We've seen um, almost in every single store that we're in um, quickly become the fastest and best growing hummus that is out there. Um, another big thing is our, our branding is very modern. Um, it speaks to our target audience. There's there's also nothing like that in our um, uh, grocery area. Um, and then also the quality speaks for itself. Um, you can go to the next slide. Um, so with that, Baba's growth has been very tremendous. Um, we've seen in the first three years since starting it, um, at least 300% a year growth. Um, it's, been, it's been very organic. Um, We've been growing um, at the start in, in all the local co-ops um, and we've expanded our footprint into Hy-Vee, Whole Foods, um, Fresh Time, we're in Kowalski's, Lunds and Byerly's, um, and we're talking to some other big box stores and um, really see a growth in there. Um, so our vision for Baba's is really, we see ourselves as the modern Middle Eastern food brand in which there's nothing like that. And um, taking those those good Middle Eastern products and branding them uh, and, and, and creating um, that effort out there. Are you? Right. Are we yeah. yeah. I just saw the, saw the, I didn't know if I was being cut off. <laughs> if you see my face, <laughs> I'm talking. I have that effect on people. Um, okay, so question here. Um, often the shelf options can be really overwhelming for a consumer. How are you going to differentiate yourself? Which I think we answered a little, but we'll hear it again. Yeah. yeah. So we're we're all about um, like I've I've said many times is the modern, um, fun, colorful branding um, that really really differentiates us, especially on that shelf. Um, a lot of hummus products and big brands are. They're, they're kind of boring or, or dull and, and we've taken a good product and also tried to brand it um, to be fun and, and inviting. Great, good job. Thank All you. right, next up, Claire Yolt. Thank you so much, Jimmy. Okay. Take Hi away. everyone, my name is Claire Eichel and I am a co-founder of CAD Foods, makers of yolked eggs. So most of you are probably very familiar with the hard boiled egg. Um, it's really an age old product. You might have experience making them at home, even maybe some experience being frustrated by getting just the right cook and being able to peel them without losing a big chunk of the egg. Well, hard boiled eggs are also a very nutritious, high protein snack that you can find in a lot of ready made options on the go today. Some of which I have pictured here. However, Many of the existing options in market are a bit lackluster. Their packaging doesn't allow you to easily portion whether you wanna eat one or two eggs at a time. The flavor and texture might leave a little bit to be desired, whether the yolk is a little chalky or the white is a little rubbery. And if you wanna add any salt, pepper, or Tabasco, it makes it a little bit difficult to eat hard boiled eggs on the go. And so at CAD Foods, that got us thinking there really must be a better way to do this. Next slide, Jamie. And that's where yolked eggs come in. Yolked eggs are a premium flavored, easy peeling, grab and go solution for hard boiled eggs. We have an intuitive eating experience. All you have to do is pull the strip, peel off the food grade cheese wax, pop out the pre-seasoned egg and enjoy. With our individual wax coating on each egg, it makes it super easy to portion whether you want to eat one egg 
or a whole dozen. And yolked eggs are available in three great flavors. We have original, which has just the perfect hint of sea salt, curry, which some of our consumers have described as kind of a deviled egg flavor profile, and then a spicy, which allows people to have that perfect extra kick, whether they want to have their eggs for breakfast or as a snack later in the day. Now, I think yolked eggs are really great, but don't just take my word for it. Let's see what some other people are saying about it. Next slide, Jamie. So in a three month in-store test market conducted at a local outlet in the Twin Cities, yolked eggs outperformed the existing hard boiled egg offering by 200% um, in a weekly turn volume. And the consumers that were able to interact with the product and purchase it shared with us on social media that they were really enthusiastic about yolked eggs. Um, they felt the flavor and texture were great and they could see the product being paired with a lot of existing foods. And so CAD Foods is now looking to raise money to commercialize our proprietary manufacturing equipment, which will allow us to support a regional launch in the upper Midwest so that more and more people can get yoked. Thank you so much for your time. Awesome, great job. Okay, question here. Will you have any focus in the future on egg sourcing such as local or free range? Yes, that's an excellent question, Jamie. Um, in our test market, we predominantly received feedback around the shelf life. People were wondering if they could keep the product out of refrigeration. And we didn't receive too much pushback on the raw material sourcing. However, the egg industry is moving towards um, having some more cage-free flexibility based on different state and municipal guidelines. And so, of course, in the spirit of continuous improvement, we will adjust our supply chain to meet the demands of the consumers of our product. Awesome, good job. All right, next up, Lena for Konomics. There we go. Yeah, so hi everyone, I'm Lena. I'm one of the co-founders and CEO of Konomics. So the $500 billion dietary supplement, functional food, functional beverage industry is like the wild, wild west. I'm sure you've heard all about it. Um, it's uh, riddled with unsubstantiated claims, confused uh, consumers, litigations, prosecutions. But if you think about it, the common thread across all of these challenges is really lack of science. Um, next slide, please. So to help companies in this industry, we have developed a product superiority platform which is um, developed using the most cutting edge genomics, bioinformatics, and artificial uh, intelligence technologies. And this platform powers our three end-to-end -end solutions. So the first solution is product validation. Consumers want products that work. So this is a customized R&D lab-based solution where we help companies validate their products before they can market them. Example would be, um, does this product or the, does this dietary supplement really affect joint health or does it really affect mental health, et cetera. So the second uh, solution is for ingredients. So do you know that um, plant uh, strain, soil conditions, climate, uh, harvest times, extraction methods can all affect the quality of the ingredients used in these products. And currently there is no solution that can ensure that from one batch to the other that these ingredients have a consistent effect or the promised effect even. So we have developed patentable assays, patentable tests to test every batch of these ingredients for their biological or their functional effect. And the first test that we'll be launching will be for uh, CBD, a very popular ingredient these days, uh, followed by other ingredients. And we'll also be providing our CAN Trust by Economics seal of approval. So when a consumer sees a product with our seal of certification, they will know that the product uh, and the ingredients used in that product were tested with highest scientific standards. And then the, our third solution, which is uh, product or formulation invention. So again, do you know that most of the products made in this industry, be it dietary supplements, functional beverages, et cetera, or shakes, bars, are really developed just copying other formulations or just um, doing what everybody else is doing and little to no science is used. So we have developed our state-of-the-art gene tune technology, which can be used for developing um, uh, formulations to target chronic conditions. And this has um, never been done before, 
this technology was developed using thousands of genomic data points from clinical trials and another data set of about 250 different botanical ingredients and 35 different micronutrients and really understanding how they can affect human genes and thereby human wellness. And uh, using GeneTune, we have invented formulations for gut health, uh, joint health, mental health, et cetera. And currently we are exploring partnerships with other companies to launch these formulations. Next slide, please. So our customers are getting tremendous value uh, with our solutions and with our services. For example, our customers are using our product validation solution have saved millions of dollars. And we made about 250K in revenues last year and have exceeded that this year. And then um, again, our goal, our long-term vision to bring, uh, sorry, am I going over time? Yeah, we, I got to interrupt you there, Lena, but uh, yeah. great. We're making food as medicine a reality aligned with our vision of bringing uh, truth, transparency, and trust to this industry. Thank there you. There you go. Nice work. All right, quick question here. Um, have any regulatory or agencies like the FDA had input yet for you? Yeah, so we actually talked to the FDA long before we even set our goal of ingredient certification. And they were really excited about this because these ingredients come from all over the world and the supply chains can be complicated and there's a lot of fraud. So yes, we have had a lot of input from them. So awesome. they're excited about our technology. Great, good job. Okay. Next up, Rebecca with Clean Chickens. All right, can you hear me? I do, yep, take it away. Okay, all right. Uh, so I'm Becky from Clean Chickens and Company. We are a value uh, added service for mobile poultry processing, so small farmers and growers, but also families working on food sustainability. And so what most people, um, can assume but don't necessarily know is that America loves meat, but especially chicken. And so Americans consume more chicken than any other source of meat. In 2018, there were 93.5 pounds per capita that were consumed. And so if you look at that chart, you can't see it very well because I'm, it's very small, but 9 billion chickens were processed versus only 241 million turkeys only 32 million cattle and calves. And so what that means is that we really, really, really like our chicken and our poultry. And so if you move to the next slide, um, there's a problem. We, we have a little bit of a bottleneck. And what that means is that there might be growers out there that could be growing those chickens, but it's not available to the people because they're lacking the processing that has gone away. And so there have been seven plus equal to, which is a state inspected facility processors um, that have closed in the last five years. There are only two USD poultry processing plants in Minnesota that process uh, for the public. One of those is our mobile unit. And then the last piece that people don't necessarily understand is that these birds that might be on the shelves aren't coming necessarily coming from local producers. And it's simply because that bottleneck is prohibiting from doing that. And so just this week, I spoke with one of our growers who had almost 10,000 birds that were hatched in Iowa. They were raised in Illinois. And for them to be processed, they were looking at sending them to Arkansas and then, of course, shipped back to Minnesota. And so if you can imagine a chicken with a suitcase kind of hauling around, that is literally how we are feeding people. And it is a problem that a lot of people aren't aware of. And so 80,000 plus birds are going to Illinois for processing. And so if you move to the next slide. Clean chickens is unique and innovative in that trying to eliminate that bottleneck, we have really gone out and above and beyond um, just your stationary processing plant that may or may not be in existence anymore. Uh, we literally cage them, then we process them, then they're ready for pickup by customers that day. And so what it means is that you're not going to find a more fresh or tastier chicken. It is going to help with a lot of that, um, a lot of that time on the shelf that we may or may not um, be aware of. And so it helps growers in eliminating the bottleneck, being able to make their 
chickens or their poultry available for customers, they can pick it up right there that day. And they don't even have to worry about the meat, meat storage that they don't have right now. And so what we're doing is, uh, is unusual in that we've had eight plus different states, sorry, um, eight plus states looking at bringing us to their state. So we're looking at franchising and licensing. Thank you. Y'all probably have dogs in the background or I do, so. Yeah. Okay, question here. Can this be deployed for any other specialty processing such as kosher or certified humane? Uh, yes, actually, uh, we have done halal processing, and we had them actually on site working with the birds. And then as far as other animals, USDA, we've had conversations with USDA using our units, which one is USDA certified, if we needed to do more than just poultry. And so they, are, they have one veterinarian assigned for each USDA site, just to manage the the proper killing techniques and that they are humane. Awesome, great job. All right. Yep, thanks. Next, Josh from Earth Scout. Awesome, thank you, Jamie. Thank you, uh, Jessica and the Minnesota Cup team. So we're uh, happy to, to be joining you today from the Minnesota Farm Fest where we spent the last couple of days talking to hundreds of farmers uh, from out the state of Minnesota and local states about what Earth Scout is. And that comes kind of to the essence of what it is. You know, at the end of the day, without farmers, there is no food. So we're at the beginning of the food chain. And five years ago, at the beginning of that food chain, we really started to look at agriculture and the challenges that farmers and what we have globally with population, limited resources, drought. Minnesota is one of the worst droughts that we've had since 1988. And farmers really lack data in season. They have a lot of data at the beginning of the season when they plant and a tremendous amount of data at the end of the year. A lot of it goes into those components for tracking for sustainability for different companies for reporting mechanisms as well. But they lack in season data to really help make better decisions. And that's the problem that we set out to really help farmers manage their irrigation, manage nutrients and help really protect against disease. We can go to the next slide, Jamie. So the solution is Scout, which is in-season data. What it literally is doing is it's gathering data both below the ground and above the ground that help farmers be better stewards of the land, help be more sustainable, help track some of those sustainability things that we want and growers want to be able to have in food traceability. If we go to the next page, We've been working with growers on this solution for over five years, and that's really important. Farmers have been part of our solution the entire time. Our R&D process through four years, so we had a minimal viable product, was working with farmers all over the state of Minnesota and all over the US. We've now been selling the product commercially in the United States and Canada now for over a year. Part of that is we have an experienced leadership team we have entrepreneurs who have started other companies, ran them very successfully. A lot of the people in our background have agriculture, have grown up on farms like me or have a farm, like my grass-fed beef highlands in the background here. And we also have people that have expertise and experience in different components of the Earth Scout as well. We're scalable through our sister manufacturer design ready controls, which is based right here in the Twin Cities where we can easily make and uh, manufacture our parts because they've been doing parts like this for the last 25 years. And we have a growth plan. Now that we have revenue, we need $5 million of angel investment capital. We're going to use that capital to help retain talent, grow our talent, and really help to reach the market with our message of, we need to help farmers in season with that data. If there's no farmers, if we can't help them be successful and have the ROI, there is no food. And Earth Scout is helping farmers be more sustainable. And we're taking that here to today, Minnesota Farm Fest, and glad we could take a break and, and talk about it here with this team. Awesome, good job. Um, question here from the judges. How are you differentiating yourself from other similar products in the market? Yeah, absolutely. So I, so I mentioned there's other data points in the marketplace already at the beginning of the season and at the end of the season. And where Earth Scout really shines is we work with all of those data points, but it's in the season. We get the cracks that currently where farmers have a really difficult time 
finding data and we make it work with the other data that they already have to make the best sustainable decisions they can. Awesome, good job. All Thank right, you, next up, Mostly Made, Jillian. Hi, go. of course my dog is barking just right yeah. now. So Perfect I mean, timing. would it even be a Zoom if there wasn't a dog barking? <laughs> All right. My name is Jillian McGarry, head of hot dish at Mostly Made. We do the fresh prep so you don't have to worry about dinner. Six years ago, my sister-in-law was diagnosed with breast cancer. To help her family, I started bringing the meals, but the bulky pans wouldn't fit in her freezer. I realized all the work of cooking was chopping the veggies and browning the meat, but once that was done, she could assemble the meal in minutes. So I started bringing her just the fillings and I realized my easy meal mixes could help other busy people who were struggling to cook dinner. Next slide, please. This is American bechamel or Lutheran binder, but whatever you refer to it as, Campbell Soup estimates that 40% of the cream of mushroom soup sold in America actually goes to make green bean casserole. People are already looking for ways to speed up their meal prep and the future is fresh. Mostly Made helps you cook a fresh dinner in minutes with items from your pantry or fridge. Just spoon our enchilada filling into your tortillas or add skillet lasagna mix to your noodles and cheese. You would never know it's a prepared meal. This year we launched in 45 Midwest Super Target stores. Our products now retail for $9.99, have easier assembly, and can be merchandised in the fresh perimeter of the store with a refrigerated shelf life of 35 to 50 days. Next slide, please. Our products appeal to busy people who care about what they eat. They want good food, but they've had to trade off between quality, convenience, and price. By doing the hard part of the cooking and then letting consumers assemble fresh, Mostly Made has a better user experience than other meal solutions. We take the pain out of cooking, but keep the freshness. Now consumers say, two thirds of consumers say that their favorite restaurants provide flavors they can't easily duplicate at home. And the share of dollars spent at restaurants has doubled since the 1950s grocery stores are losing dollars as consumers are seeking more interesting and convenient meals. Mostly Made delivers the fresh, fast casual flavors people are craving. We fill a gap in the market offering restaurant quality food at grocery store pricing. Today, my sister-in-law is celebrating five years cancer-free and Mostly Made has donated over 2,000 meals to groups like the Ronald McDonald House through our Random Acts of Casseroles program. Please join me and let's make cooking fun and easy and spread hot dish around the world. Thank you. Awesome, good job. Okay, question here. Uh, as a returning semifinalist, what changes or updates do you have for us in the past year? Yeah, so we have some big areas where we've been listening and improving on the things that you can see and also on things that you can't see. So where you can see, we were able, taking partly the feedback from the experience we had last year in the Minnesota Cup, um, we were able to, sh to shrink our price point. We reduced it by 30%, so now we are under 10 bucks. We got a refrigerated shelf life. We used to be in the frozen aisle, so that's pretty big. Um, and then we launched uh, Super Target. The things you can't see, we're really putting in effort now into the, the structure, the operations, and the supply chain side of the business um, because we need to grow that in order to scale our business. And we're becoming more sophisticated in our marketing. So it used to just be me going out and doing a lot of demos. Now we're going to be experimenting with IRC, instant redeemable coupons. Um, shopping list apps, more targeted advertising, um, spending our money as close to the cash register as we can. Awesome, great, good job. Thank you. Um, okay, Eric from Pure Tap. Hi there, my name is Eric McCann. I'm the owner and general manager of Pure Tap. Have you ever had a beer on tap that just didn't taste right? Well, that's what Pure Tap does. We provide cleaning services to bars and restaurants to make sure that the beer tastes the way the brewer intended. 
We found there's a couple of problems in our industry. First is safety. We use a harsh alkaline cleaning solution that uh, can be damaging to people if it gets swallowed. We found that uh, our technicians need to wear safety glasses, uh, chemical resistant gloves, and they need to be sure that they rinse all of that cleaning solution from the cleaning system. Um, we've also found that as we're doing this, we have to pour all the beer in the uh, beer system down the drain. And this causes a waste problem for our restaurant owners and uh, bar managers. So we're finding that uh, normal systems were wasting about $10,000 in beer a year and larger systems over $20,000 a year. So the uh, solution we came up with is the EcoClean system. The EcoClean system uses PTC, which is pure tap cleaner, a uh, cleaner we developed. It's non-toxic, eco-friendly, and uh, it's completely safe and effective as the cleaning solutions that are being used today. The second part is the unit that's installed in the cooler. It's uh, as easy as tapping a keg. Here's how it works. Basically, our uh, bartender is alerted when it's time to clean a line. They hook up that line to the EcoClean system, they return to the bar, and they continue selling beer. As they're selling the beer, the line fills a cleaning solution. Once the cleaning solution reaches the faucet and before it's poured, the line automatically stops. This alerts them to go back to the cooler and to uh, reconnect the keg, return to the bar, and then continue pouring the cleaning solution out of the faucet and safely down the drain. Once beer reaches the faucet, the process is complete. They've wasted hardly any beer and they now have a clean line. Next slide, please. Currently, PureTap has 450 plus clients around the Minnesota and Western Wisconsin area. We've identified about 160 of those clients that would be great candidates for this system. Our goal is to go for those clients first and place these systems in their establishments. The next goal for nationwide expansion would be to develop franchisees. These franchisees, we figure, are co uh, companies similar to PeerTap. Our, uh, our, our identification, they'd be people that would uh, service beer lines already, and uh, we'd go after them to sell to their customers as we found the need in our uh, market. Next slide, please. Our goals uh, coming up for 2021, we wanna finish testing and development. Um, we're gonna place an order for our first 50 units. Um, in quarter three of 2022, we hope to have 75 units sold and our franchise program developed. Quarter four, our first franchise agreement signed and uh, 50 units sold by that franchisee. Our goal is to add about four and a half franchises a year. Um, we wanna have 490 units by the end of 23 locally and 1,500 units placed nationwide. That's how we plan to grow PeerTap. Thank you and cheers. Great job. Okay, question here. What type of competition do you face in this space? Uh, currently in this space, locally, we have other tap line cleaners that currently use the traditional methods um, like we do. N on a national scale, we found there are some auto cleaners um, and there's, there's even a new group out there. But so far, they're not using anything that's eco-friendly. So it's still, it's not solving one of those problems. Um, the chemical is extremely dangerous. Uh, if someone were to swallow it, it would ultimately and easily put you out of business. So that's the one differentiator for us that we find is that we're, we're providing a safe product that we developed. Um, and we currently have a patent pending on the uh, system used with the solution. Awesome. Good job. All right. Last one of the day. Okay. Andy, Twin Cities Ferry. Can you hear me? Yep. Take it away. Awesome. All right. Well, thanks everyone for sticking around for this entire presentation. Three years ago, I formed a simple hypothesis. I was fresh out of my PhD work developing season extension techniques for local off-season organic strawberries. And these strawberries just tasted better than anything I'd eaten in my entire life. And I hypothesized that consumers could really latch on to something like this fresh, local, organic, off-season fruit at very high quality, and they'd be willing to pay a premium in order for that privilege. So I turned down a professorship and founded Twin Cities Berry Company in 2018, a research and production farm dedicated to strengthening our local food security in the face of an increasingly insecure climate. And that's really the rub right there. I realized that we needed to push my research even further and design a system where we can make fruit 
in light of record rainfalls one year, record heat and drought the other year, record storms and derechos smattered in between. And that's exactly what we're seeing in our environment right now. So if we go on to the next slide, we can see that the business needed to be split into two separate divisions, two mindsets really in order to tackle these two problems, fruit production and fruit research. And on the one hand, you've got a fairly traditional fruit farm model. We're growing fruit, we're making fruit products, value added goods, and then we're generating revenue from the sale of that uh, fruit. And on the other side, we have a division specifically for applied research. So writing grants, forming partnerships, developing IP, protecting that IP, specifically around creating an optimized climate resilient growing ecosystem. Our goal is to start as a fruit production company that makes strawberries and raspberries and then develop into a fruit technology company that after our technology has been optimized and patented, we can produce fruit as a proof of concept and then generate revenue through licensing. And we go to our last slide. We've had three years of concept validation, right? So let's see if we've been able to prove my hypothesis. And we can see I've consistently been able to quintuple the traditional Minnesota strawberry season. Our latest harvest ever has been November 9th. And I'm expecting to significantly push past that this year due to continual developments through our research division. Since 2018, every single berry that we've ever grown has sold out at markets and co-ops at several times the national retail average price. And our processed goods, which even have a higher margin, have been written in the Star Tribune multiple times in their food showcase section. So the fruit production side, good. On the fruit research side, we have really honed in on developing what I like to call the fruit factory ecosystem. And without giving away too much of the secret sauce, it is a totally enclosed, highly modified system where we're able to produce a high density of strawberries and raspberries in the same space, create thousands of fruit per year in a very small footprint. And this environment has significant resistance against heat, flood, and disease pressure that we're seeing more and more often in our unstable climate. I've spent three years confirming my hypothesis, and now we're ready to scale. With the help of Minnesota Cup, we can study our past to make fruit now that protects our future. Thank you. Good job. Okay, um, kind of hit this one in your in your slide there, but what's your plan to pursue retail and get the product on more shelves? Absolutely. So right now, like I said, we are inside the farmer's market and co-op space. We're available at the Wedge Co-op. We've been at Seward Co-op as well. And I would be remiss though, if I didn't advocate a little bit more for the farmer's market space. There are over 140 farmer's markets in the Twin Cities metropolitan area alone, over 200 in the state. 100% of the revenue great gained goes directly to the farmer and the consumers going to those markets, they intrinsically have a higher willingness to pay for local organic, high quality off season goods. So, we can scale a lot more within that farmer's market space, but absolutely, we have gone into co-ops and we will eventually expand once we've saturated that farmer's market space because we generate about two times the revenue per flat of fruit in the farmer's markets than we do in the co-ops. Continue our relationship with the Wedge and Seward and then move on to more regional brands like Kowalski's. All right, good job, everybody. So. Moving on um, to the best pitch of the day. So uh, for you audience members, I'm going to put a poll up and you get a little bit of time here to vote on your favorite pitch today. So here it comes. Get those votes in. Yes, we'll provide our music. <laughs> trickling in. I, I always make the analogy it's like watching popcorn or it just starts to trickle but you know there might be a couple more pops left so if you have a vote in there 
some of these races are tight. All right, should we call it? Go for it, Jamie. Okay. All right, I'm gonna end the poll. Make sure I find the right one. Oh, tight race, but our winner is Pure Tap. Yay! This is Congratulations! Too. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. Thank you guys so much. Sure thing. All right. Thank you so much. Um, and congratulations to all of the presentations. Those were fantastic. And it is always high pressure to try to cram so much information into three minutes. So um, kudos to all of you and great work. Um, so in addition to this fantastic best pitch prize, I am really grateful and excited to turn the mic over to a few of our sponsors who are offering additional support and resources for the founders in the food, egg and beverage division, which we're um, super lucky to get to share. So um, first up, I'm going to pass the mic to Brian Erickson from the Minnesota Department of Ag. If you want to, you want to mic yourself up, um, Brian. I'll I'll have you describe what y'all are sharing. Great, thanks, Jess, and thanks to the uh, Min Cup team. Um, I'll just say quickly that the Department of Ag and our New Markets Program is excited to continue our support of the Min Cup process by offering a prize to. Um, the, the semifinalist Minnesota food company who is most ready to grow, and that will be judged by the, the judges in this category among the sem semifinalists in the next round. Um, so that, that prize can be claimed in the form of any of our programming to include uh, a booth at a trade show like Natural Products Expo West or the Fancy Food Show, or it could be uh, claiming additional cost sharing funds through our cost share programs for activities like e-commerce, digital marketing, trade show, store demos, etc. So again, thank you to the Min Cup and good luck to the, uh, to the contestants here today. Great job. Thanks so much, Brian, and thanks to the Minnesota Department of Ag. We've um, just been really lucky to receive your support and support to our founders for such a long time. Um, but as Brian mentioned, just um, we are not going to be revealing the winner of that prize today um, because Minnesota Department of Ag um, uh, leverages the expertise of our judges who will be selecting our finalists and those other prize awards next week. So um, stay tuned for those announcements and good luck. Um, excited for whomever gets to take that home. Um, I am uh, going to step in and let you all know about a new prize that we are able to offer for the very first time this year, thanks to the financial support of Midwest Dairy. Um, Midwest Dairy is an organization based here that supports uh, a large region of Midwest Dairy producers through food safety research and innovation. And this year they are sponsoring a $5,000 prize that would go to the most innovative use of dairy among all the applicants to the food, ag and beverage division, not just the semifinalists. Um, so we're super excited and grateful for that prize. And I am very pleased to be able to announce on their behalf that um, the winner of this first ever Midwest Dairy Innovation Prize goes to Yes Cheese. Um, yes Cheese is a Duluth, Minnesota based company that offers gourmet cheese delivery to your door through their um, delivery boxes and systems. So um, they're a fantastic cheese producer um, made in Minnesota and giving you access to really high quality fresh products that um, are, look perfect on cheese plates and um, have all kinds of other convenient uses um, for, your, for those many, many of us who love cheese. So um, congratulations to them. Thank you again so much to Midwest Dairy for funding this award. And um, our third and final special prize is going to come from JT Mega. And so I will pass the mic to Anna Braun, um, who will tell you a little bit more about that, that award and who's taking it home this year. Thank you, Jessica. Great job to all the contestants. This is always such a really, really, really fun day um, to witness. So great job, everybody. Um, I'm with JT Mega, and we are a food and beverage focused advertising agency based in Minneapolis. And this is our fourth year um, being part of Minnesota Cup. And each year we have the opportunity to give away a $25,000 
in-kind award that we call the scale award. Um, it's really intended to help brands build up their businesses with marketing efforts um, most critical to their business at that time for growth. So it's something that our teams get really excited to work on each year. Um, and this year, like always, there were some fantastic contestants. And as a team, we have selected that the winner of this year's award is going to be Babas. So congratulations. Um, we are really excited. A couple of the things that our team thought of as we selected this winner is, you know, we're really excited to help build upon a unique brand story, increase footprint. Um, we love the product, so can't wait to, you know, both eat and be uh, inspired by the amazing um, product. And we really love the mission of being the modern Middle Eastern food brand across the United States. So congratulations, and we look forward to working together. Awesome. Thank you so much, Anna. Um, and super big congratulations to Babas. We've had um, tremendous experiences from other semifinalists who have won this award and gotten the opportunity to work with JT Megan in the past. So kudos to you. Um, congrats. And, and we'll, we're excited to see how this award helps you grow and scale. Um, and yeah, thank you again so much to all of our fantastic uh, presenters. You all did an incredible job and um, you have really risen to the top among tremendous entries. Um, so just to give a little bit of context to those of you who are learning about Minnesota Cup for the first time, who are here to support a founder and aren't necessarily familiar with their competition process, you are seeing um, a moment in time for these founders, but they have all been participating in and receiving um, different support through our program since the spring. So um, applicants filled out our online application in March or April. Then they were, um, all those applications were scored and reviewed by our amazing food, egg and beverage judges, who many of whom are um, represented. And I know you're here watching. So thank you so much for your incredible insight and support and willingness, willingness to give generously of your time to these early stage founders. Um, once they were selected, that, that top group of top 10 companies that you just got to watch pitches from now, um, those companies have been hard at work on a business plan, a pitch deck, and a one-minute video with the support of many of Minnesota Cup's free education programs and volunteer mentors um, who've been walking on this journey with them for the past couple months. So all of that information is done, submitted, they did their hard work, and um, this showcase is really meant to be a celebration of all of those semifinalists and trying to spread, um, spread the message and share what they're working on with the biggest audience possible. Um, then coming up next week, our food, egg, and beverage judges will meet again to select the top three companies who will move on to the finals, and those three companies will present another longer pitch um, live to those judges and give them a, an, a chance to interact live, ask questions, and definitely give the, the founders more than just three minutes to be able to share everything that they want to about their business and why they think that they should move forward. So um, we're really excited. There's a, a lot has happened already and there's more to come, but the next public opportunity for you to uh, tune in hear from our division winner and runner up from Food, Egg and Bev, as well as from the other eight divisions in Minnesota Cup uh, will take place on Monday, September 20th. So if you wanna be part of that, if you wanna see who continues to move forward in advance and take home a share of the over $400,000 of cash prizes that we're able to give away this season, please um, mark, the, mark your calendars for that date. And if you aren't already, um, visit our website mncup.org to sign up for our mailing list. That's always the most um, foolproof, effective way to make sure that you receive all of our event notifications and you can follow along with the progress of these awesome Minnesota companies. Um, so again, thank you so much for your time. Thanks for spending some of your Wednesday afternoon with us and with these um, great companies. And uh, we just look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks, everybody.